Hi, I'm going to go over how to play Raging Rectangles. This is technically a two-player game, but you can also play it by yourself. It's just probably not quite as fun, but it's still good practice. Um, in order to play Raging Rectangles, you're going to need either two dice, or you're going to need the cards that are attached to the document. And you'll have to cut all the cards out and put them in a pile somehow, face down so you can't see the numbers. So um, in order to play this game, player one is going to either roll two dice or draw two cards. These numbers are going to become your lengths and your widths. So for example, if I rolled two dice and they ended up being a two and a four, that means that one side would be two and the other side would be four units. So um, let's pretend like I, drew, I, I uh, rolled two dice and those were the numbers that I got. So I could find a spot anywhere on this grid and I'm gonna make a rectangle that has a length of two and a width of four. Now I know that since it's a rectangle, this side is going to be the same length as the opposite side, and this is going to have the same width as the opposite side. So I should have a rectangle that has sides that are 2, 4, 2, and 4. So they want us to find the perimeter and the area, and you're going to write the numbers on the inside of your rectangle. So don't forget to label them P and A. I have written the formulas for area and perimeter over here off to the side. So just as a reminder, the area is going to be the length times the width, and then the perimeter is going to be the length plus the width plus the length plus the width. So the area is the inside of the rectangle and the perimeter is the outer edges. So as player one, I'm going to first find the perimeter, so I'm going to add two plus four, which is six plus two more, which is eight, plus four more, which is 12. So my perimeter is 12. And then to find the area, I'm going to multiply the length times the width, which is two times four, which is eight. So I'm gonna write eight. Then it would be player two's turn. So player two would play, they would either roll two dice or draw two cards, and whatever those two numbers are, they're going to make their own rectangle anywhere on this grid. So let's say they rolled a three and a five. So they would make a rectangle somewhere. It doesn't have to be right next to player ones. It could be anywhere. So let's make it over here. So we have three for the length and five for the width. And then player two needs to find their perimeter and their area. So to find the perimeter, we're going to do three plus five, which is eight plus three more, which is 11, plus five more, which is 16. So I would write 16 for the perimeter. And then area is going to be the length times the width. So three times five, which is 15. So then it would be back to player one and player one would roll two dice or draw two cards again and make a new rectangle somewhere on the grid. So the object of the game is to have the most area when you add all of your areas up. But the way that you find out when you stop playing is when you can't put any more rectangles on your page. So if um, it gets really full and player two rolls two dice and they're supposed to make one that is six by six, but there's not enough room on the grid, then the game is over. Now, it doesn't mean that player one wins necessarily. Player one is going to have to add up all of their areas. So if they had an area of eight for their first rectangle, like they do over here, and then maybe they had another rectangle that had an area of 12, that would be 20. They had another area of a rectangle that was 10, that would be 30. So, um, so player one would have 30 as a total for their area. And then player two, if they had 15 for their first rectangle here, and then maybe they had 12 for another one, so that would be 27, and they had eight for another one, um, they would win. So it, whoever has the most area would, would win the game. So that is how you play Raging Rectangles.